Sharks are famous for having been around for an immensely long time, with a fossil record extending all the way back to the Paleozoic, a time before even dinosaurs. Sharks have undergone some incredible evolutionary transformations in the time they've been around for, with a remarkable diversity of these fishes existing in the past. They have been highly important parts of aquatic ecosystems in all parts of the world for hundreds of millions of years, and continue to be today. This park that I'm standing in right now was once a shallow tropical sea, brimming with all kinds of prehistoric life that lived here 54 and a half million years ago. A fantastic variety of animals inhabited these waters, including many species of sharks. I've come to Abbey Wood, a park in southeast London that's been designated as a site of special scientific interest due to the incredible abundance of fossils that can be found here. This locality dates back to the Eocene Epoch, after the age of the dinosaurs, and preserves marine, estuarine and freshwater organisms as fossils. And it's not just shark teeth that can be found here either. Spectacular bivalve and gastropod shells, crocodile remains, turtle remains, even very rare bird bones and mammal teeth can be found here too. Here's an example of the sorts of mammals that have been found here. This is a large herbivorous pantodont called Corypodon. He's a good boy. <laughs> but considering that it's shark week, the best week of the year, I'm here on the lookout for some of these fish teeth. I've come to this locality with my friend and prehistoric shark researcher Eddie Bartlett, who is currently studying the fossil shark teeth of Abbey Wood for his undergraduate dissertation project. So what exactly is your project here? So I'm looking at the paleoecology of sharks from the Eocene of Abbey Wood and Walter Monet's, and this here is Abbey Wood. In terms of the paleoecology, I'm looking at their size and diversity, so looking at how many sharks there were and what's their sort of distribution. Eddie is systematically searching this locality in order to get a large representative sample of the shark fauna that lived here. It's recommended that you bring a trowel and sieve to sort through the sediment here, and because it's a protected site, you can only dig down a maximum of two feet, and you need to make sure you have prior permission before you collect it. So that's how Eddie went about fossil hunting. It was a very successful technique too, with loads of teeth being found in the small area he searched on the first day. Look, I've already lost a load of sediment already. Give it a good shake. Let's me find more of this flint as well. Don't need that. Mm. So this is quite a good piece of the um, shell dentition. You can see the um, yeah dentition around there. I oh, think amazing. it means it was Glycemerus, right? Maybe, um, which is like a sweet bivalve or something. I don't know. Yeah, like found four already in like just a few minutes. Those two look like like small striatolamia ones, whereas these other two, I'm not sure. They might be um lateral teeth more towards the back of a jaw or mm. maybe a different species like Jackalotodus or something. Who knows, find out later. A lot of sediment was collected into small containers and then washed out of a nearby visitor centre too, before being loaded into a larger container. This is all material that will be dried out and then taken back to our university where Eddie plans to acid digest it, hopefully revealing many more shark teeth. Back at the site, I tried a different approach to finding some teeth. So why are there so many fossils exposed at this one level? Well, this is the Blackheath Beds, which is part of the Harwich Formation. And now normally this isn't exposed around the country, except it's here because um, there's an unconformity where the Fanit Sands has been cut out. And so this has stayed in and it's present. It's also because um, this used to be a shallow inland sea. So this was all underwater. And because of that, it's quite low energy, like it's quite calm. So anything that did die here settled to the bottom and was rapidly covered, allowing it to be fossilised. There's a huge abundance of shell fossils here which show how productive the site is. Everywhere you look on the ground there are crushed shells of gastropods and bivalves. And even without a sieve, there are so many teeth hiding between these shells that I managed to find quite a few, including this beautifully preserved specimen from a shark called Striatolamia. So what sorts of sharks can you find here? There's a fairly decent diversity I've seen from what I've read and found. Uh, you get these ones with uh, crushing teeth, so they're like vomerine dentition. Um, but the most common is this shark called uh, Stratolamia macrota, which uh, is a bit like um, a sand tiger shark, like tiger sharks today. And it could get to about three and a half meters. It's it very common here. 
The classification of Striata lamnia has been somewhat debated in the past, and although today it's generally considered to be a member of the sand tiger shark lineage, it was at one point thought to be more closely related to the goblin shark. Striata lamnia was a very widespread shark genus, with fossils found in the Americas, Europe, Asia, and even Antarctica. There was an interesting study published in 2020 in which teeth from Antarctic Striatolamia macrota were used to investigate environmental changes occurring in the Eocene Southern Ocean. A formation on Seymour Island, just east of the Antarctic Peninsula, preserves a remarkable diversity of life and records the changes that took place at this time when Earth went from a greenhouse to an ice house condition. And these sand tiger shark teeth enabled paleontologists to track how they responded to these shifts. The study of these fossils allowed them to realise that the environment actually stayed relatively stable at this location, even with the opening of the Drake Passage changing ocean circulations, showing how important the study of shark teeth is. The body length of the animals was also calculated from their teeth, so that they could estimate the life stages of the sharks present here. So how do you work out the size of the shark from the teeth alone? Well, there's a very important researcher known as Shimada, and he's done probably a lot of the megalodon research you've heard of. And in 2004, he came up with this equation to work out the size of tiger, sh tiger sharks, which are very closely related to uh, Stratolamia crota being a sand tiger shark. And this equation he came up with was total length in centimetres is equal to uh, minus 26.665 plus crown height in millimetres times 12.499. This equation is specifically used for fossil teeth that come from the front of the shark's mouth, the anterior teeth. So for example, this really nice tooth I found earlier, we just measured and it's about 1.2 centimetres in length. So Eddie's done the calculation and it comes out on an animal of about 1.23 metres in total body length. The fact that such information can be gained from remains as limited as just the teeth alone again illustrates how important studying these fossils is, as so much insight into the ecology and evolution over time of these amazing animals can be determined. So Abbey Wood is a great place to come and find shark fossils, being easily accessible and offering a brilliant insight into the world nearly 55 million years ago. Here you can find evidence of the prehistoric creatures that once called this place home and see for yourself the true diversity of ancient sharks. Sites such as Abbey Wood offer a rare chance to witness the world as it was at this particular point in deep time, and anywhere that can do that needs to be protected and explored. Study into this locality is bound to continue in the future, with internationally important finds of mammal and bird bones being made here, and researchers such as Eddie helping us to understand the ecology of these prehistoric sharks. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks especially to Eddie for letting me come along and film his project. I really hope you've been enjoying Shark Week 2022 so far. Still to come is our annual Megalodon video, this time on how it became the world's ultimate predator. Also be sure to head on over to my mum's channel, One World, where she's just made a Shark Week video investigating the mystery of why so many sea otters are suddenly dying of shark bites. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters too, especially our dinosaur tier patrons, Amanda Von Nordek, Archianthus, Brent Furman, Clara Middleton, Daniel Ingraham, Dhruv Srivastava, George Vojtek, Jet Skipper, Corey Peterson, Loxie Poo, Mike Pace, Nicole Bueno, Persian Boy, Robert Thomas, and Steve Bradshaw. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.